woods, don't fail me. See, and that's why we don't want to go to Canada. This made the trip. This yeah, really did. It did. Easternmost everything around here. This is bleeding easternmost. Or it's just a tall building. No. <laughs> it's a beacon of hope. So this is Sunset Point Campground and we are going to Sunset Point Campground. campground's been good the weather's kind of looked about like this the whole time we've been here <laughs> it's a sunset point campground and we are going to sunset point campground very creative with the names as you're going up the coast uh kurt here is the owner and 20 years ago he came and kind of pulled this campground up out of the ground and he takes so much pride in it it's very tiny and small but the grounds are absolutely beautiful there's a trail that goes along the water with benches and he's just thought about like places to enjoy the view yeah. and i appreciate that so much but it's just precious we've really enjoyed it we and it's the coolest office i've ever seen we've had pretty good service we have t-ball Mobile home internet that's worked great here. Um, AT&T's worked. I don't know anything about Verizon. Mm. So we're on the main coast and we haven't seen any lighthouses yet. So we're <laughs> going to Lubeck to Sunset Point, like she just said, and we're going to West Quaddy Headlight. And I have never been there. I'm really nope. excited. It is the easternmost everything. So right. that's uh, that's going to be the theme of this episode. <laughs> is going to be easternmost everything. Now let's get this closed up. We always sweep because we tore our floor right here and Jess actually gets a napkin and goes under this. She picks this up and goes under this with her hand as well. And you see we, we have our ice maker usually. We have our cappuccino machine usually. That's our toaster that goes in there. Everything else goes in here. So that's where this stuff goes. And we actually put the water reservoir for the cappuccino machine in there so we don't ever waste any water um, we always save these like foam things because they're really good for packing so if you get some of this nice foam keep it on hand see where you could use it for for getting things packed up our tiny little house all closed up it's a small house and it becomes very small when the slides in but we still have access to everything and that's something that you do need to think about if you're looking for a new RV to be thinking about what you need to access when you're coming in if you can't open the slides. And for us being able to access our whole kitchen and be able to get into the fridge if we need to. There is an awesome. asterisk to that access Correct. everything. So when we get groceries, what we do mm -hmm. is we go like this. So we put our slide out. I'm gonna show you actually. So if you look here, watch the slide make contact. So then right there is when you can actually put some weight on that because the weight is off the actual slide mechanism and on the floor now. Right. So we so it's open not gonna give a, it's not gonna have a bunch of give if you're like putting so weight on it. Open the slide up a little bit like this. And then that gives us access to be able to open the door. So when we're re reloading groceries or something on the road where the girls need to sneak in and get their thing, we bring it out about nine inches. With that being said, that's how we do things. Every rig is different. What's one tip for your specific rig that, uh, that you think maybe somebody else doesn't know? My favorite, which I have mentioned before, is touch every single door before yeah. you leave. <laughs> I never, I, if I think I've forgotten, I'll open the door back up and make sure I touch everything, especially this one. <laughs> yeah, make sure that's closed. Can you imagine if that came no. open? I've heard horror stories. It's never happened to us before. Um, some people just latch it. That's probably the safest thing to do. I haven't done it this time, so. You're gonna watch me go through and touch every single one of them. So anyways, this is, um, this is it. This is the inside of the RV. <laughs> let's, uh, let's go down east. At least it's not raining. It is not. This is, I can deal with this, but if it was pouring, that just, uh, it doesn't make my... <laughs> that kind of ruins the whole, like, let's pick up the RV and move on. Yeah, I don't, I don't like it. I already don't like picking up wet hoses that have dirt stuck to them. <laughs> uh, wah, wah, wah. Uh -huh. But like I said, at least it's not raining. Oh no, it is starting to rain. Let's go.
Okay, so we have an incredible sight here. The only issue getting in is that it has rained so much that we have massive amounts of mud and it is going to squish down for he's going to try not to drive on that at all to get into our site. This is muddy over here too. You don't want to keep going back. We'll make some soup. <laughs> we can roll around in it later. All right, I'll just go forward more. I just don't want to do the same thing over here. I know. I have. I actually put it in four-wheel drive just in case. Okay, so I'm gonna go and I'm gonna back up this way a little bit. Perfect. So tell me when the tires maybe are about here. Okay. You should have seen the tires just squishing water out. They were shooting water as you walked. Oh as you drove. I was up. paying attention to the pedestal. Get like that close to it. Because I didn't want to go on that other side. I know. We just got to our campground. Corey is outside getting everything set up and the girls and I are getting the RV set up on the inside. And today is actually Corey's birthday. We were laughing hysterically this morning about how funny RV life is sometimes because the first thing he got to do was dump our tanks on his birthday. Happy birthday, honey. Um, <laughs> we are gonna go and grab him some pizza and the girls, while we're gone, are surprising him by setting up the RV as a movie theater. You know that they love setting up special spaces for each other's birthday and they're really excited about doing that for their dad as well. Because we're in Maine, we are going to do a whoopie pie cake for him. We went and got a bunch of whoopie pies and we went grocery shopping today and we're gonna kind of build him a whoopie pie tower as his cake. We're gonna get him out of here so that the girls can work on their surprise for his birthday. <laughs> These girls know how to do it right. We have a pizza party. They set up this while we're getting pizza. We're gonna watch Fast and Furious on the big screen because we missed it in the theater. We usually go to the theater for these. This is the last one. Go. Oh my gosh, you guys got movie lights over yep. here too? We tried to hang up another one from Christmas, but they're dead. <laughs> I was so upset. I thought I tested them, but they didn't work. You gotta see this pizza. The pizza party. Mm. It's a three meat. meat. Pepperoni, hamburg, and- Hamburg. Italian sausage. Italian sausage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is that one's kind of random. This is gonna be good. Now, I didn't know you guys were setting this. The screen up in here. <laughs> so, Layla, Layla worked very hard to calculate. Really good job. We'll have to measure it, but I it doesn't fit the whole thing since we couldn't put it farther enough back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is great. I love it. Thank you guys. You're welcome. Good job, girly. Okay, it's another day, and it's back to normal. The girls aren't treating me quite as good anymore. <laughs> you only get one day. Only one day. Actually, it's pretty lucky because we just did Father's Day. They treated me good then. My birthday, they treat me good now. And then 4th of July. So everybody's happy around 4th of July. So that's in a few days. And then our anniversary. And as long as I'm good, she's going to be nice to me. <laughs> I'm glad you understand you're clear on how that works. Yeah, I got it all figured out. 
<laughs> and I'm totally kidding because they're always nice to me. Um, we have a moody day. That's what we're going to call it here. Lots of fog and at least it's not raining. True. So we're going to go check out West Quaddy. We're going to check out Lubeck, the town, maybe a museum or two and just, you know, see the sights. I'm going to call it moody because I think it's going to make for, you know, some interesting photos and video. I like sun. <laughs> we miss the sun. <laughs> miss the sun. <laughs> But the sun will come back one day. It will. Um, so we're just going to enjoy what we have now. Moody, dramatic, and this is really why there are lighthouses because at night people can't see, obviously, and in the fog, lighthouses were always accompanied by a fog horn, and you can hear it in the distance. This is a really unique lighthouse. Unique, I don't know, definitely unique to me. I've never seen it before, I've seen many, many, many pictures of it, but I don't know that I've actually ever seen a you know, red striped lighthouse. You can hear the foghorn going off. That is what guided these sailors. Like we got GPS now, we don't really need it. You can kind of see, but they didn't have any of that back then. They needed this kind of stuff. That's why there were so many shipwrecks. We're like, well, why did you run into that? Cause you can't see sometimes. hearing isn't actually the fog horn on the lighthouse. It must be in the channel out there. And that's what we're hearing. It's a really cool noise. Yeah, it's incredible. But this did have several different iterations of fog horns. Uh, I think there was like cannon fire first, then a bell, and then... The uh, bell that's out front, right, Layla? Yeah, yeah, Layla did all the research on it. So just as important for navigation as this light is, is the sound. Right. Because I think this particular lighthouse has the most fog of any lighthouse. Very cool. Which is, I believe it. I really I, Yeah, I, <laughs> as we believe. We totally believe it. <laughs> lighthouses are awesome. I absolutely agree. I found this quote on the website here. It was written by Edward Rowe Snow, and it says, to almost every man and woman, there is something about a lighted beacon which suggests hope and trust and appeals to the better instincts of all mankind. I thought that was really cool. Maybe that's why everybody loves lighthouses. I think so. It's a beacon of hope always. Or it's just a tall building. No. <laughs> it's a beacon of hope. <laughs> it's a beacon of hope, Don Louis. <laughs> <laughs> there was a, uh, a picture of the Milky Way. Lily's pointing this out. I was like, I don't want you to be upset about it. Just, just so I know what I could capture, but I can't. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? <sighs> <laughs> and that is something I've always wanted to do. Take a photo of the Milky Way here. I've seen so many photos of it. It's just not in the cards. Not right now, anyways. I love looking in the windows. This is a beautiful wrought iron stairwell that goes all the way up. So this is it. This is the easternmost lighthouse of the continental US and the easternmost point as well. So we're here. So we've done Key West. We haven't done the northernmost point. What is it, Minnesota or something? Yep. We're gonna have to do that now. We've done the westernmost point in Washington <laughs> as well. I can't remember the name of it, but this is great. I love this. So there's a few hiking trails. We're gonna go see what we can see. I don't know. 
we're gonna see very there much. A, there may be more of a break tomorrow where we can see a little bit more. The longer we're here, the more the fog is rolling in, so. <laughs> yeah, there's no way to judge fog. You can look at the weather and it doesn't really show fog. Right now, it was supposed to be sunny. So like, yeah. I don't know how many feet up there, the sun is shining. <laughs> These aren't clouds, this is fog. It's still like magical though. It really does make you understand the importance of what these lighthouse keepers were doing back in the day when this was the only warning that you had was for as far as navigation goes. It's incredible. We don't have a ton of days here. We had four days here, but none of them look any better than this. And unfortunately, where we're going next is only like a mile from here, but it's you have to drive all the way around a point, so it's actually an hour away. So it's gonna be hard to get back down here. We got skunked on the Cadillac Mountain sunrise. We got skunked trying to get a sunrise here. here. There's just no such thing <laughs> in, this no such thing. <laughs> in this weather. There's no sunrises. This is a point in Maine where the light touches the United States for the very first time. So there's it's there's some controversy, there's some complications, but Mars Hill, West Quaddy, and then Cadillac Mountain all at one point claim the first light. So one of those three points on a on a minuscule scale of minutes has the first light. <laughs> Correct. But anyway. So if you hit any of those, you have the first light. I mean yeah it, it'll be fine if you can ever see the sun rising when you visit those places yeah. we have uh we've been skunked by sunrises for a long time we haven't seen one i can't remember the last time we saw a sunrise it has been a very very wet wet season here all right we're gonna go take a hike take a Milky Way shot right here. This is where all of Corey's dreams are crashing into the wind. <laughs> but we gotta practice what we preach. You just gotta, when you're there, you gotta just go. You should be able to see all the crashing waves all the way down that coast right there. Yep. Yep. But this looks cool too. Is that a tidal fall? I don't know. I don't think so. I wonder if that ever splashes into the water from the ocean. What do they call that? There's one out in Big Sur, right? A tidal fall, I'm pretty sure. Oh, that was another foggy day. That was another foggy day. We, we can, can see barely see it. <laughs> well, that is really cool. Holy cow. Gorgeous. Look at the wow. trees. Lily was just commenting that Maine's like furs are just a different color and it's interesting because this is where Reeds Across America starts is like just a little ways away from Lubeck and Lubeck is actually considered one of the wreath making capitals of the world because of the type of balsam fir that grows here and so it's become an entire industry for the people who live in this area it's amazing well you can see why look at all these look at all these pine trees so what you're saying about like the age and, and having them last it's, longer? They can only be taken from a tree in a bush that's at a certain age and it has to have five fingers so it has to look like a hand. So it's very specific about when they cut it so that it continues to grow and because it will make the actual wreath last for like over two months and it's shipped all over the country and sometimes internationally, which is really crazy. I do really like that Reese Across America organization. We have a few followers that actually participate in that every year and so they help drive the reeds all across the United States to lay on veterans' grave sites. I'd love to be able to be in a location where we could help with that some year. That'd be awesome. What do you think? This is a pretty, pretty is awesome cool. bike. Oh. Oh! Gary over here. Wow, Layla. Look at this. Oh my gosh. It was mushroom over I here. had no idea this was here. Look at these roots. Roots don't fail me. Roots don't fail me. Alright, let's go. Let's keep going. 
Oh, okay, we're taking a turn oh, no, into the forest. <laughs> Look how green everything I is. Know. This is unbelievable. There's moss and ferns and evergreens. This is amazing. Everything being wet is actually giving it a little bit more contrast, <laughs> so it's really cool looking. Yeah. You can see deep, deep into the woods all the moss on the ground. And it definitely smells like Christmas in here. It sure does. I love it. Ah, this is awesome. I love it. Layla, what were you saying? That we're like five months away from Christmas music? And yeah, I'm <laughs> Not that far. This does kind of, this definitely reminds me of the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, for sure. I said it in the Pacific Northwest that Maine. that reminded me of Maine, and now it's confirmed. It's confirmed. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> Lily's got the best dad jokes. I'm gonna be the best dad. She's gonna be the best dad. <laughs> Other than the, the foghorn, this forest is so dense, You, it's just so quiet in here. Green point. Is there a big reveal, girls? Uh, I mean, it should be like fog point, but. Fog point. <laughs> Just adds to the mystery, the allure. <laughs> it adds to, to the misery. misery. It just adds to my misery. This is not miserable. <laughs> this is awesome. No, but I am going to rename this white point. <laughs> yes, white point, not green point. It's green because of all these beautiful evergreens out here lining the way, all the Christmas trees. This is awesome. I know, it's just so beautiful. I love that all these points along the coastal trail that we just took have like ledges where you're standing on the edge looking straight down into these beaches and then there's areas like this with rocks where you can go out and explore. It's fun. And there's another one that we can walk down to the beach closer to the trailhead. Cool. So we'll do that. Great. We were gonna do a big hike over in the Cutler Preserve. It's a big 10 mile loop. But they said if it's raining at all, the trails are going to be horrendous. And these trails are even horrendous. We're, we're jumping through mud pits. So <laughs> I don't think 10 miles of mud pits would be very fun. And I don't know that we would see Probably anything. Not. I'm glad that this is here because this is what I was hoping that other trail was going to be like. Yeah. So this is great. People wrote to us saying, make sure you don't miss the trails that are down by the water at the headlight. I thought they meant like a little trail that went down to the water. I had no idea how yeah. amazing the trails were down in the state park. So this differs from Acadia because this rock is a completely different color. Acadia is that more orangey rock, which is really, really amazing. This is more like a slate gray where you can see some of the like the moss growing. It's awesome. Very cool. Let's head back. All right. Sounds kind of like a thunder hole situation right here. Yeah, it's right down there. Is that a seal? Where? Oh my goodness! Is it? There. It's right there. Yeah, there is a seal. I'm glad you went back down. That is awesome. Well, a big wave, because when we were coming up, I could hear it. It was like, Ooh. Yeah, it was like really loud.
trying to get the shot. Yeah, don't don't fall, please. All right. I did not intend on being as inspired as I am today. I was like, oh, hold on, it's all foggy. What an unbelievable day. This is gorgeous. If you're coming up to Acadia, get yourself up to Quadi. It's the easternmost point. You can check it off your list. Um, we're gonna go to Lubeck, that's the easternmost town. Lots Just know home. this is the easternmost area of the United States. It's gorgeous, it's slower than Acadia, so yes. you're gonna have a lot more time to relax. It's not as busy, it's not as touristy. You can find a parking spot, it's lovely. This is a, this is a magical little hike. I, yeah, uh, the girls I'm, are like, this is like one of our favorite hikes in a long time. So, so far Maine is really checking off the hike list. It really is. We got done with the, with the lighthouse and we got in the truck and everybody was like, ah, oh, it's cold, it's foggy, we can't see anything. We almost skipped this hike. I know. Don't skip the hikes. If you're Don't on the fence, it. just do the hike. You're, you never know what you're going to find. This has just been amazing. I can't imagine if we had missed this. This made the trip. This yeah, really did. It did. So excited to see you guys come. If any of you make it here, make sure you tag us in photos. We cannot wait to see you guys enjoy this place. And we just met some followers up the trail and they had their dogs with them. So this is a dog friendly park and they can come on the trails with you. How insane is this little hike? It's pretty insane. It's definitely one of my favorites now. And I ain't just saying that to say that. It's just green. Everywhere green. I feel like this hike has changed like seven times though. <laughs> And it's only like a two mile hike or something. Oh, this is cool. All right, so I was looking at these yellow flowers in here. They're probably poisonous and I'm all up in their business. So I'm gonna be all covered in a rash here in a second. One of our crew members turned me on to this app. It's called Seek. So I guess you just take a picture of it. And it is called Canadian Bunchberry. I observed a new species. Very cool. For me, not for the world. <laughs> this is cool. Now I don't have to wonder. You gotta come listen to these rocks. You gotta listen to these rocks as the waves come down. Now listen. Come on. Man, I hope that's getting picked up by the camera. Love it. Oh my god. That's our rock beach over there. And there is the lighthouse. This would be a really cool view if you could see it. the lock button first so it sounded like it unlocked it. Ultimate devastation. I can't believe you used the Okay. There's the forbidden border right there. <laughs> you shall not pass. <laughs> you shall not pass. Well, look over here. There's the border. That looks nothing. That yep. looks dangerous anyways. <laughs> it does look dangerous. Dangerous. Well, what you hope it's Canada. If you go there, you never come back. <laughs> See, that's the reason why we weren't allowed. I'm not going to Canada. Look at Canada. <laughs> that that place looks dangerous. You can't even look at it. <laughs> that car is about to go into nowhere. Oh my gosh. That is side, like buddy. a horror movie. See? <gasps> Something in the mess. <laughs> I mean, that's why we don't want to go to Canada. Just kidding, Canadians. We love your country. I want to go there We so want to go bad. so bad. <laughs> it's my fault. Sorry, guys. Oh, man. So this is downtown Lubeck, as you can see from this, this perfect sign right here. Oh, it's so cute. I, I'm not even joking. I love that sign. I do, too. Took a ride down here earlier and got pizza right there across from the border. Um, this downtown looks pretty spectacular. There's a bunch of history here. There's like a smokehouse here where most of the herring was smoked and, and shipped off to the troops, you know, during World War II, same history. Here it is, the easternmost town. We can find the easternmost dock, <laughs> easternmost shingle, the easternmost rock. Man, if you're 
Masters, easternmost everything around here. This is bleeding easternmost. <laughs> You're a dork. <laughs> look, at this. look at this, this is great. Yeah. Look out the whale well, though. Oh, hey.